Hello, hello, and welcome to Metaphysical Happy Hour. I am your host, Cassandra Clayton. And I'm your co-host, Tracy Escobar. Hi, Miss Cassie. How, How are, are you? you? Doing good. How about you? Good. It's hump day. It's Wednesday. It's you said it's sunny, but I haven't been outside all day, but I have my coffee. I'm like all cozy. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love Good it. Good to be back here with you again. I'm excited yes. for today's show. We have something we haven't had on before. So I think it's going to be uh, fun yeah. and interesting. Yes. Very Tell us exciting. Who we got? So we actually have um, an animal communicator here with us tonight. Um, her name is Bianca DeRose, and she is from Sydney, Australia, which is also really cool, too. That is um, so, cool. so what she does is she helps pet parents to trust and feel confident in connecting to their pet and their inner self so that they're, they experience self-love, harmony, and joy together through animal communication and soul coaching. Ooh, can't right. wait. I know. I can't wait to dive in. <laughs> so without any further ado, hey, hey Bianca, how are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. So good to be here. <laughs> Hello we from the future. <laughs> we got to do a little catching up before we went live. And oh, she's tomorrow already. So in Australia, it's yes. already Thursday morning. <laughs> So I was like, hmm, absolutely. What can we predict that happens tomorrow? Maybe she can tell us things. <laughs> it's welcome a beautiful to our show. sunny day today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome to our show. We're so excited to have you. Like I was telling Cassie, I don't think we've had an animal communicator on before. So I cannot wait to dive in. And you can tell us all about that and what that entails. But first, I know we always have a lot of listeners who are, hey guys, everyone's saying hello, hello, hello. Um, a lot of our listeners are listening because they're having their own experiences and they're having their own awakenings. And I think it's happening a lot more now, right? Because I don't know, mine was only like six years ago. So I feel like within the last six years, been so many people awakening, so many people going down their own spiritual journey. So I want to ask you about your journey. How long have you been on this journey? What did you do before you did this work? Who was Bianca before she had her awakening? Oh, wow. Loaded question. question. <laughs> <laughs> loaded question. You really want to know? <laughs> we we, we don't start off light. <laughs> Let's Good dig in. Wow. Um, oh, gosh. I, th I think my awakening is, is still ongoing, I must okay. say. I don't think Fair that enough. will ever stop. You know, um, some people do have the experience of awakening after a major event in their life. And for others, it just happens gradually. Um, I mean, before I, I started my business, um, I was actually in corporate finance. So <laughs> very, yeah. very different world. It is. Um, and um, throughout my spiritual awakening and the learning that I've gone through, it has been a really bumpy road. Okay. And it's been quite intense, I must say, because it's not easy to, you know, coming from that sort of environment, being quite analytical and, you know, the corporate world, all the things that people expect of you, yet at the same time, you've got this experience on the other side that you can't explain for yourself. And it, it's not tangible and nobody talks about it because I started already back in 2004, 2005. Okay. And especially in those days, there was, you know, hardly any speak around awakening and spirituality. And, you know, it was very, very new. So I had nobody to to turn to to identify even what I was going through. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's it's been it's been amazing at the same time. I mean, you know, yeah. don't regret a moment of what I have been through. But, uh, yeah, it's it's still ongoing. We keep expanding. We keep growing and learning. Yeah. And now we have beautiful communities around us that we can do it together with. So, which is amazing. It's amazing how many of us are out there. And now with social media and more mm. of us are coming out, not worried about what the public thinks, right? It's all, mm -hmm. it's this whole community exactly. being built now. So I don't feel like I'm alone. I think yes. in the beginning you feel alone, right? hundred percent. Yes, oh. very much so. Yeah. Because with me, it, it, it all started with having a knowing that I've always had throughout my life and people have always come to me going, Oh, Bianca knows everything. So they would always come to me and go, well, I've got this issue and I'm struggling with that. And for whatever reason, I always knew what to say or what to guide them with and how to guide them, but I didn't have any clue where that came from. 
and you know it's like yeah you know everything well no, i don't know everything but <laughs> you know so once once things started to become more clear to me and in particular the physical um experience i had which started with my hands feeling really hot and cold and sensitive and tingling and painful at times that I started to figure out like what is going on and you know going to traditional doctors mm -hmm. and everything they all said oh there's nothing wrong everything is fine um, and it actually wasn't until my mom said what are you actually experiencing with your hands can you explain it more to me and I did and she goes mm. she goes I would love for you to put your hands on your legs and I go yeah sure so I did that and the minute my hands touched my legs I had this energy surge coming through and it wow. was so intense. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And my mom started yeah. laughing and she goes, I think I need to teach you a few things. Because my mom is a Reiki master and a Shambhala master. And she was already in that. No world. way. Yeah. And I sort of knew that, but I never put two and two together. So, oh, wow. so she, um, she explained to me what was going on. She goes, you are basically combusting with energy that you have coming through without you realizing you don't know what to do with it. So... Um, and that started that journey off. Yeah. I think that's amazing, amazing for our listeners just mm -hmm. to understand too. It can mm -hmm. start physical and, and it's a, a yes. lot like my story too. My story, I was getting tingles on my head and I was like, literally, I was going to have to call a neurologist because I couldn't, I thought I had brain tumor. I had brain cancer. There was something mm -hmm. wrong with my brain because it continued. I had like, like it was always falling asleep. And I was like, what is that? And it took a while just to finally realize that's how it feels for me when spirit's trying to to connect with me and communicate with me. Yeah. Maybe my head tingle. Yeah. But for me, something was definitely wrong. I didn't recognize it. So anybody out there who's listening, pay attention to your body, pay attention to the weird things that are happening. A lot yeah. of people who suffer from anxiety too, just a little learning moment. Sometimes that can be spirit too, because energy affects us as it gets closer and it can have all these different effects on us. So if you're having this unexplained anxiety and you can't place it, Maybe we should do some meditating. Maybe we should try to connect because that could be it too. So I think that's just a great point that you bring up because it happened to me as well. It all started in the head. Yeah. And mm. yours was at hand. And how lucky were you yes. to have a mother could help you and walk you through that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So so that started that journey off. And then I learned, you know, Reiki um, initially and uh, found, found another teacher and yeah, just really figuring out how can I apply that for myself and what can I do about this more more logically. And right. uh, but it, it also took me in a bit of a, a dark spin because I tried to analyze it all so much that I couldn't figure it out. Um, and um, so it took me a little while to adjust into that. And, and at the same time, other things were happening in my life that mm -hmm. it all coincided. Like three major events happened around that that starting point of the awakening that really changed things around for me. And um, yeah, it was a huge, huge period of my life <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Look at you yeah. now, right? And look at you now. So tell us what services mm. that you offer because you have some really unique services. So let's talk about the first one, Soul Connect Coaching. What is that? Can you tell our listeners what that entails? Yeah, so everything that I do is underpinned by soul connection, which means that we are remembering what it feels like to be connected to our soul, to be connected to our inner self, a higher self, whatever name you might want to call it, um, intuition. Because whatever we do in this world, we are still a soul being having a human experience. And we often forget that because our human is so much what I call in the driver's seat to have this experience here that we forget to connect to our essence and um, soul connection is, is through a coaching process and a mentoring process, I help people to find that connection again oh. by releasing anything that may be blocking that at a human level. Okay. And okay. so once we have that connection, that's where we can really tune into our intuition. We start to understand what our abilities are from a metaphysical spiritual levels. How do we apply that in everyday life? And then from that place, we filter that through to animal communication. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, your spirit guides, loved ones that may have passed, whatever you choose to connect with, it can then happen in that process as well, because we are all one. We are all still connected to source. So we have that whole world we have access to. And we all have it, right? All of us. Yes. Absolutely. 
You just got to tap Absolutely. in and you got to open yeah. it all up. Yes. Another one of interesting services that you have is the soul. Is it soul vibe portrait? Did I say that right? Yes. Soul, yes. Soul vibe the soul portrait. vibe portrait. Yes. Um, I mentioned before that, you know, the awakening process is still ongoing and yes. we, we keep being, you know, yes, you wake up, but then you still have your learning to do and you still go into different um, energy levels and you still expand and learn more and, and you know, you level up in that sense. Mm -hmm. So one of the recent things that I've discovered that I can actually, once we have a connection to the soul, I can tune in to someone's soul energy and then draw what the soul is telling me in that moment so that someone has a, 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 a print, a visible print mm -hmm. of their soul in that moment. And there are symbols coming through what some call light language or soul language. And that pulls the whole picture together so I can share with that person what their soul is actually communicating to them at that moment. Fascinating. And it could be anything from this is what you may need to work on or this okay. is what your soul looks like, right? Okay. And give that story as well. So, yeah. And are these sessions in person via Zoom? Um, that is a remote, um, a remote session. So, okay. yeah, I get a photo through. I get approval to tune into their energy. Okay. And then, yeah, I'll just do this remotely, really tuning in, channeling all of that through. And then okay. I send an audio recording and the drawing in digital format via email. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Fascinating. And then lastly, this is our favorite subject because this is what we're going to talk the most about today. Your animal communication. <laughs> and I had to ask Everybody knows I'm a medium and my level of communication is with those people, right? But Bianca can do living animals and you can connect with them and you can do passed away animals yeah. and you can connect with them, right? So tell yes. us, how, how did you get started on the animal communication? Because that's a really specific niche, right? That's really specific. So I mm. want to hear your story about how animal communication even became a part of your, your services. Yeah, it's... Um... I've always been affiliated with animals. I've always had animals around me whenever, you know, as a child and teenager, we went on holidays with my parents. We always went to places where there were animals, you know, working with horses and, you know, dogs and we've had birds and guinea pigs. So all throughout my life, I was always really curious to, to find out what is their experience, you know, being with us? How do they even look at us? What do they even tell each other about us as humans, you know? <laughs> Um, but I never really got hold of that sort of information. And um, it wasn't until I got my two dogs, Rosie and Toby, and they, especially Toby, he used to always sit in front of me and stare at me. And I would just look at him going, mate, you probably have a lot to say, but no idea. It. No <laughs> idea. So until a, quite a few years later, I was on a bushwalk with a friend of mine here in Sydney. We've got beautiful nature reserves um, throughout Sydney. And we were walking and um, at one point we said, oh, let's just sit down and have a bit of a break. And we just sat and had a break. And I heard this voice in my head appear and asked, hello, can you hear me? And I looked at my friend, I go, did you say something? And Miriam was like, no, 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 okay. And again, hello, can you hear me? And I ignored it. Then it said it a few times. And then in the end, it was really pushy, like, hello, hello, can you hear me? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, I can hear you. But this was all in my head. And I thought, this is going crazy. Now I can hear voices, like, seriously, what's going on? And I go, well, yes, I can hear you, but who are you? And the voice said, I am a snake. What? And I'm under the tree, because we were sitting on a, on a tree that had fallen down. And he goes, I'm under the tree. And I go, yeah, right, Pff, I don't believe that. So I asked him, I go, can you show yourself? And the snake goes, I don't prefer to show myself because your friend next to you is actually afraid of snakes. Oh. And I don't want to upset her. However, I need you to listen. And I'm really grateful that you have acknowledged me. You need to go out into the world and do your job. And I'm like, what? Do my job? I thought I was already doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, you need to go out into the world and bring animals back together with the humans. And I was like, wow, Okay. And every time I think about it, I get the chills because it's chill, just such yeah. a, a profound, you know, moment for me. And my friend was looking at me and also she goes, what just happened? Something weird happened. She goes, I can see it in your face. And I asked her, I go, are you afraid of snakes? She went white, jumped up, looks around. And I just looked at her going, oh, I didn't you know are. that. 
but that was a validation. It <laughs> so, was a validation, and, yes. And that really opened it up for me. So on the way back on the track, there were a few lizards that I could hear talk. And then when I came home that afternoon, Rosie told me run to the front door, as dogs do. Very excited. I came home. And then Toby all of a sudden stops. He sits down. He looks at me. And he goes, you can finally hear me. And all this information came over me. And I was like, whoa, mate, stop. I have no idea what I want to, what I need to do with this and what this is. So, so that basically opened up that whole channel to, to you know, really hear them. Um, How magical. Because I really feel what they experience as well. I'm very you much do. an empath in that sense too. Um, but that really opened up like that verbal communication with them. And then I found other people that do similar work um, and did some courses in this and just to get practical experience in it. And now I found my own niche and way how to communicate. And um, yeah. yeah, the rest is And you teach others. Yeah. I teach others as well. Yes. That's like so you say, everybody can learn this. Everybody can learn this. Yeah. Cassie, can you talk to your animals? Cassie's got a lot of animals too. I have yes. <laughs> they all find me. Tell me, please. In different ways, but I and I I feel like sometimes I can kind of get into their brain and kind of see what, like, but I mean, to talk to them the way uh, Bianca is saying she could, I, I'm like, that is yeah, beyond yeah. me. But, but yeah. mine have come into my life essentially because, you know, I went to PetSmart to get a fish. That's it. It all started with a fish. And now I have two, two cats, two dogs, and finally did add the fish. So yeah, yeah lovely. So I took a fantastic. yeah, I took a psychic development class one time, and they made us connect to an animal. And I think mine was a tortoise. Yeah. So let me just ask you, because <laughs> it's kind of hard connecting to a turtle. What's the weirdest animal? Any weird animals or? Anything out of the ordinary? Um, well, insects are very interesting to connect with, like yeah. spiders and cockroaches. Um, I know. Ew. <laughs> but I must say, ever since I've learned to communicate with animals and do it very, very regularly, I'm not afraid of spiders anymore. You're not. Because now I know where they're coming from. Now I know how sentient they are and, you know, what their purpose is. So if I now see a spider in the house, I still have that initial, like, oh, there's a spider. But yeah. I'm not afraid of them anymore. So I now actually just talk to them and go, do you want to stay in the house or do you want to want me to put you outside? Yeah. Um, and if, I'm, if we've got the big huntsman, which we do have here in Sydney, we've got these big, hairy, brown, tarantula-looking huntsmen um, okay. coming into the house often. So then I just grab a little Tupperware container and just say, okay, I'm going to put you in the container. Okay. And then if you wouldn't mind just hopping in there, it's only for a split second, and then I'll put you outside and you can tell me where you want to be in the backyard. And then I just guide them to where they guide me to, and then I'll release them. And then yeah. you release them. We have big old brown yes. spiders here too. They're called wolf spiders. Mm. I'm not sure. Oh, yes. I'm not sure I'd put them in a container, but yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> well, the huntsmen are quite, you know, they're okay. They're not as dangerous as they're not know, dangerous. wolf spiders, for example. Yeah, like we've got the, the, this, we've the, got the funnel webs here as well. So I do. Yeah, but aren't I the huntsmen like, like kind of ginormous? They they can be as big as my hand, yes. Uh -uh. Yeah, <laughs> that's like and and when you see that on the wall, you go. <gasps> <laughs> uh, they're harmless. They're harmless. You know, they're they're not aggressive. Um, they can obviously, you know, bite you, but it's, sure. it's not as bad as as a funnel web. A funnel web can actually kill you. So and we've got redback spiders here as well. They can kill you. So I would definitely leave them alone. <laughs> I wouldn't even go near them. Um, but you know, and cockroaches have a different level of energy. Um, when I connect to a cockroach, it's like because when you connect to animals, what happens is that we have a level of vibration in energy, right? As humans, mm -hmm. every everything held energy, and everything has a vibration and a frequency attached to that. So, for example, if we vibrate at this level. Animals are usually at this level okay, because they are always in the present moment. Always. They don't even consider the past or the future. They don't even consider any of that. It's literally what is the next moment? What's the next moment? They really live in that space and they come from a place of unconditional love as well. So hence their vibration is higher. And what we then need to do 
is get ourselves into a state of meditation initially, especially when you're first starting out. You want to get into a state of meditation to be able to lift your vibration, raise your energy so that you can meet where the animal is at. And then you have the same frequency, which opens up the channel to have that conversation. And conversation mm -hmm. is either you hear the words or you feel the feelings or you see images that they send you, you know, you get a knowing about what goes on for the animal. Yeah. So, so that's in a nutshell, what, what yeah. happens now. Kind of the same as mediumship. Yeah. Hmm? It's the same as mediumship, same process. Yeah. Right. It's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and I mean, when I do conscious mediumship, I even put music on to really lift the bar in the vibration, right? I really get the energy going, I'm dancing and yeah. Um, with cockroaches, the level of energy is even higher and faster. Interesting. And they very high pitched in their frequency. So it took me a very long time to actually be able to connect with them to see what goes on for them. I so, think it's yeah. fascinating. And it's fascinating to learn too about animals and dogs. Like a lot of people, when they have to give their pet away, there's this angst and there's this guilt that the pet's going to miss them, but they really truly live in the present day. Like they don't, right? They don't miss yesterday, right? That, no, not, not necessarily that, but they do remember and they, they remember. do miss us, right? Okay. However, it's actually good you touch on that because, yes, there is a lot of angst around the fact that, you know, you may have to adopt your animal out. Right. Now, I always invite people to look at it from this perspective. Humans have people in their lives, have a relationship, maybe even get married. Sometimes that doesn't work out because all of a sudden you have a mismatch, right? A mismatch, or, yes. or you meet someone and you just don't relate to each other. And that happens. Mm -hmm. You can't like and love every single person on earth. Right. So with animals, it's quite similar, animals and humans. Sometimes we have an animal that we may have adopted. But if you don't resonate in that relationship at a person by person level, at a, at a soul level, then sometimes the best decision is to adopt the animal out. OK. And, and that can happen. This happened to me. And yeah, I felt terrible about it. It was a very emotional process. Yes. But we adopted a dog and he did not resonate with us at all. Didn't take our leadership. He it was almost to the point where our, our personalities completely clashed. Okay. So we had to make the hard decision of adopting him out. And he found a really beautiful family. And sometimes that's okay. And the animals are also better for it. Right? They are because they, they will are. be much happier, and <laughs> you will also be much happier knowing that the animal is in an, in a family where they do um, resonate with each other. Yeah, and and that's okay. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah, we have a comment. Um, my dog was crying first for me. Then I found out the neighbor lost someone. They had their son's dog. They were communicating. Oh, so animals can yes. communicate with each other. Obviously, yes. Hundred percent. Yes. Hundred percent. Yes. I think yeah, this is fascinating. Definitely. I wish I could do more dogs. It's fascinating. It's just fascinating to get in their yeah. heads and do you communicate with your own? Uh, tell us the whole story about how you. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I communicate with my my dogs all the time. Um, my my two dogs, Rosie and Toby, they are now in doggy heaven. Mm -hmm. um, they passed away a few years ago, and now we've got a little fourteen month old uh, mini mm -hmm. schnauzer called Raphael. Um, we call him Rafi for short. And, um, yeah, you mentioned about his name. We actually had two names for him that we thought of. And when we went to pick him up, I actually asked him, I go, which name do you prefer? And before I knew it, I saw this green sort of light coming up and he showed me a big number one when I mentioned the name Raphael. So that was it. That was it. That was his name. It was that magical. Was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was actually interesting because I spoke to one of my clients and she actually confirmed that because she was learning animal communication. And she goes, oh, Raphael's showing me a number one with some green around it. What does that mean to you? <laughs> oh, that's his name. Validation. I <laughs> really liked his name. Yeah. Yeah. Validation. So I that was really that. cool. Yeah. Kathy and Kathy. he is. He's a, he's a real healer, you know. He's a yeah. real he, he's always connected himself. So, yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful yeah. match then, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Kathy asked, are you able to communicate with animals that have crossed over? Is it different? Yes. Is it different? Um, it's a slightly different energy. Okay. It's a slightly different um, different level for me to tune in. I, I, I always feel that 
even though it's, look, for me, it comes second nature, right? I don't have to sit consciously in meditation to have that connection. And I don't know about you, Tracy, whether you have that as well, that you now, mm -hmm. you can just like that. Go there. And all of a sudden you have, you know, um, Grandma sometimes, the, it, it, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> Room full of people. Um, yeah. But sometimes it, it, what I've experienced is it depends how soon or how long ago the animal have, has passed. And it also depends on what they are doing, whether mm -hmm. they have a job to do straight away, how soon are they adjusting? Have they fully crossed over? You know, um, I, I do know that it's not our job to call them back to connect with us. Okay. They come to us when they're ready. So oh. if people do book a session with me to connect with their animals that have passed, I always say that's great. We can book it in. However, we may have to reschedule if they're not ready to come through yet. Okay. So Fair. I always do a bit of a like a call out. I always, you know, visualize like a megaphone <laughs> coming yeah. out into the universe. We would love to speak to this in this beautiful soul, but yeah. it's, it all depends when they are ready to come through. And and the most recent one was a couple of weeks ago where a dog passed over. Um, and within three, four days, he was ready to already come back and have a chat to his owner to make sure that she understands that he's absolutely okay. So, and that was really quick. Yeah. But normally it takes, yeah, quite a few weeks. But it's yeah. leveling yourself up even more so. So sometimes it needs to happen a bit more consciously. Yeah. I had a reading the other, I think last two weeks ago, and a lady had lost her. And I forget just how much people's pets mean to them like it was like a child mm -hmm. like she was grieving so desperately but the main question is are they okay and so how would you answer that are they okay on the other side yeah most of the time they are yeah. the ones that I've communicated with most of the time they are okay you know they're they're in a beautiful place they have absolutely no more pain because they have no more physical body right so they are back with their soul family and as they transition they always have their loved ones coming through as well to, to either wait for them or to help them cross over. Yeah. And with my Rosie and Toby, they passed away. They were brother and sister from the same litter. Okay. And they passed over within a month of each other. Oh. So it was very, very yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that Toby would go first because he was already in palliative care for quite a while. But then Rosie stepped out very unexpectedly. Okay. And she told me later that she had to do that because otherwise Toby wouldn't cross over because she wasn't there to wait for him. Mm -hmm. no. I feel that too. And so yeah, the pain that. That, that you, I even underestimated the pain that you can feel and the grief that you go through when exactly. a pet passes over. It is so enormous. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it, it was a good like reminder for me. Yeah, definitely yeah. a good reminder for me because I haven't lost a pet in a while. But it was a good reminder just to see how devastating yeah. it can be. So that was a great message to people yeah. just to know. And your pets, we have some people on TikTok and their pets have passed away as well. Just know they're okay. Mm. right? They're with the rest yes. of the family. They're playing. Like whatever you would picture their heaven to be, that's kind of, it is what it is. Mm. So, Tracy, I've got a question for you. As you mm -hmm. tune into, you know, um, the mediumship skills, yeah. have you experienced not being able to connect with someone because they may have reincarnated? So no, and I have a theory about that. I'm going to hear yeah. my theory. Oh yeah, I'd love to hear your theory. <laughs> I have a theory. I've never not been able to connect. Now, some spirits are harder to connect with because you know if they weren't a talker in life, they're sometimes not a talker in the spirit world, so it can be really difficult. But the way it's been explained to me and just through my experience, the human part of us think of us as one unit, right? We're human, mm -hmm. so it's one. But our soul is not a single unit. It, and from what I can understand, there's multi facets. So I can still have the remnants of who I am in the spirit world, but still have reincarnated. So I can still have the essence of who I was as a soul connect back with a medium, but still be in a reincarnation, right? So it gets really complicated that here on the human part of us wants to make it singular. We're a soul, that means we're one. But if you think about it, if we turn back into energy, can't we be in multiple places, right? Yes. Isn't there a saying that we're in a multiple places currently, that we're in multiple dimensions, yes. living lives, Parallel right? Lives and things, right. Yeah. So I think it's the yeah. same for the spirit world. Parts of them that can stay and I can still be able to communicate, but other parts of their soul have gone on and reincarnated. So mm -hmm. is that, it's complicated, 
It is, but yeah. Spirit world, like it's complicated. It's just complicated. It's not normal, right? But that's kind of my yeah. theory behind it. Mm -hmm. mm, mm. My theory that I can just call them back and I can still communicate. But then sometimes in a reading, I'll, I'll feel it. I'll be like, yeah, they're here, but I know, like my dad's been gone 31 years. He will still come through in a reading, but I know he's had to have reincarnated by now too, right? But he'll still come mm -hmm. through and people who, who connect to me and do a reading for me. So that's my theory. I'm sticking yeah. to it. None of us will really know until right. we pass away, I suppose. <laughs> But <laughs> no, well, exactly. We probably already still know what that means and what that feels like because you've right? just forgotten about it, right? Yeah, so, but that's yeah. my experience. And that's why we can still tap into our past lives as well. Exactly, exactly. Because that energy is still there. So. It's still an energy there. It's still a. Yeah. Mm. Just like with haunting, say, like, I don't know if I believe that an actual soul is haunting, but it could be the remnants of energy, right? There could be that. So yes. energy is multifaceted and very sophisticated, if I could say. I'll yeah. say. Sophisticated, yeah. You also have two books out, and I want to make sure we mention your two yes. books. What is "Hello, Can You Hear Me?" about? So, "Hello, Can You Hear Me?" is um, was my very first book. Oh, <laughs> I love it. And um, that that title is actually because the snake actually asked that question. "Hello, Can Hello. You Hear Me?" So that was really my starting point with animal communication. So um, the book talks about that story, but it also it's not just a reading book. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very much a hands-on person and I thought, okay, how can I get people to already tap into animal communication a little bit? So mm -hmm. the book talks about my story. It talks about what animal communication is and the importance of that, mm -hmm. but it also actually gets you to work as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you and it has an exercise in there so that you can already start practicing with your own animals as well. And there's even a page there to put a photo in of your loved one that may have passed over. Um, so there's a, a couple of stories in there of animals I've worked with. And, um, you know, I've got here a few animals that I've worked with over the years as well. Oh. So it, it's a real practical little guide, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for anybody who wants to start, right? Yeah, that's right. And the book is really special to me because during the publishing stage is when Rosie passed over. Oh. Um, so I had to adjust a few things in the book as well. So it became really special for me. And Toby was still here on the Earth Plane when I published the book. So okay. he, he experienced the birth of this book. Yeah, which is amazing. Oh. So that's very special. Beautiful. That's really special. Yeah. yeah. And then you have another book. So let's share your other book. It's an intuitive yes. living. Intuitive, intuitive living. living. It's a practical guide for women who want to um, deeply embrace themselves, basically, and really tune into your intuition. Um, this book is a collaboration with 24 other authors, including oh. Dr. John Martini. So every person has written an amazing story about what they have gone through, why intuition is so important to them, how they apply it practically in everyday mm -hmm. life as well. So yeah. it's a really wonderful book. It's got a beautiful energy and um, yeah, very proud of it. It was an amazing project to be part of. Yeah, absolutely. Aww. Do you, um, I was gonna ask, do you teach online too? Yes. Do you have workshops? Okay. We're in I used to do workshops in, in person, but, you know, yeah. COVID hit, and I thought, oh, how can I do this? But I'm also a vocational trainer by trade. Okay. Um, so, you know, it, that's in my DNA. Um, so I thought, well, let's just do this online and, and still it. continue yep. doing this important work because my, my mission in life is to help as many animals and people that I can to bring them together and actually have that harmonious relationship from you know, your, your essence from your soul's perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we do a lot of group work online. I do one-to-one -one coaching. Um, okay. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So love it. yeah. Hey, Cassie, why don't you put it where people can find her in case? Oh, absolutely. And then I'll, um, people love your accent, so I'm going to read some of the comments. Um, hi, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you. Tammy <laughs> loves your accent. Um, definitely need to watch the replay. She missed it, but she loves this topic. I'm like, people love their animals. And... Yes. For them to know that they can Very try. Special and it's a great way to practice. Everybody who's trying to develop their own gifts and stuff, practice on your animals, mm. right? They're right there. Mm. And they don't talk back and they won't tell you you suck or you're wrong. So it's easy to practice with them, right? Oh, oh, they can. They will. <laughs> they're so loyal. How? They're very straightforward and to the point. And they will they tell you. 
<laughs> if something needs to change. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. I love that. The, well, the that first time love. I had that experience was um, when I connected with a cat who actually told me that they changed their behavior from being a really sweet, placid, you know, relaxed cat to becoming quite aggressive, in particular towards one person in the household. Okay. And I said, "What? why is that? And she says, well, he comes home from work and actually starts drinking alcohol. And he is not becoming a very nice person when he does that. And that has an impact on the family. So he needs to stop that. And I was like, oh, and that was one of the first times I was guided to share that with the humans around the cat. And I was like, how do I tell them this? So, and I thought, well, I'll just have to share it, right? Because that's my role. Whatever the role. animal tells me, everything is, is shared. I cannot filter anything. It has to come out. So, so I did. And they actually took it really well. And he goes, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I'm so stressed at work, et cetera, et cetera. So he started to change what he did coming home from work and then no longer drinking the alcohol, and which was a big change for him. But the kept changed back to her normal self. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, animals are absolutely in a space of if you're not listening, I'm going to change my behavior. So you have to pay attention. Have to pay attention. And then I'm going to find someone who can tell you what needs to happen. So, and that's, yeah, they're pretty full on in that sense. You're the <laughs> they are the a You're the voice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they only do it ask. because they love us. They do. When you're doing an animal reading, do you have to have the animal there or can it be through a picture? Do no, I don't picture? have to do have the, the animal here. Um, sometimes a picture can enhance the connection. Okay. Um, so, you know, okay. yeah. um, or I tap into the person's energy as well, which is usually so when I see them or have that on a photo. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. We have a question from Lily. Would it be okay to ask for a reading? My dog is part of this world and is snoozing right next to me. Just wondering if you sense Aww. or hear anything from her that might resonate with you. And then she says, ha ha, I'm well, sure my dog thinks I'm dumb with the silly things I do. <laughs> 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 Had to read it all. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, look, I'm happy to, if, if you can share a photo through the chat, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Um, she's, she's joining us from YouTube. So I don't know if YouTube uh, takes oh, you okay. through. Yeah. You might have to write in to get a reading, right? She yeah. needs to have a photo to connect with. Yeah. Okay, everybody's like, I want a reading for my dog. I want a reading yes. for my dog. I love that connection <laughs> with my dog. Oh my God. Yeah. So I'm saying it's a really good thing. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Where they yeah. can come find you. Yeah, um, so that's where, yes. yeah, tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell, so, awesome. So, Thanks, Cassie. Everyone, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, well, as Cassie has so nicely changed my name there, <laughs> my website's right there, biancaderose.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, MeWe. I think that's it. Not okay. on TikTok yet. Not on TikTok. Good <laughs> about TikTok, TikTok today. TikTok, <laughs> I have so many animal lovers on my TikTok right now. Well. Um, but yes. Um, gosh, everyone's talking about their pets. See, see. <laughs> So I'm telling you, it's a good niche because people love their pets. So, right? Um, we've yeah. had some pets die. We've had some. I need to know what happened to my kitty Titan. Like so many people. So I think if you got on TikTok, you would do really well. I'd love to know why my dog is so stressed and what she needs me to do to help her. You see, everybody, there's so many people who need help with their pets. So I think you're doing an amazing thing, right? Hmm. Yeah, and then finding people who guys can do this yourself. You can get her books. You can learn how to tap in yourself. And it's kind of like leadership. I was telling her, it's just using your clairs. So however, right, you strengthen your clairs. What's your strongest clair, Bianca? Do you have a stronger one than normal than any others? Um, oh. Is it all now? I don't, you doing it yeah, before? it's it's sort yeah. of a mix. But I think the, the, the one that really stands out is the sensing. Okay. And the yeah. knowing. Those and are the, the two that are really standing out. And then my third one usually comes in as you know, the words that I'm hearing. So I can hear the voice. I can hear, you know, the actual words coming through. And sometimes my voice matches that there. vibration as well. Um, and then I, as last is my seeing, 
my clairvoyance and it usually amplifies when I apply my hands as well because the energy with my hands if I especially touch an animal or even a human um, I can see things around them that's happening in that moment okay so yeah okay but Someone yeah, the asked, first one's knowing and sensing. Knowing and sensing. Someone asked if you mm. ever help locate lost animals. Is that something that you I have, about? yes. It's not my favorite thing to do because that's very intense. Very intense. Um, there's, there's quite a pressure that comes with that because people are really anxious and upset and, you know, worried. So th there's almost like, you know, you must do this now, you must do that now. So it's it's um i do do it depending on how long the animal has gone for okay. and i have found animals as well so oh, have you yeah yeah, yeah which yeah. has been amazing and one animal i can clearly remember this was the late last year was a cat up in the mountains about an hour and a half um west of um, sydney and that cat actually ran away and didn't want to come back and Did found it? herself a new family oh yeah. how was yeah. that giving that news very oh. tough very That's tough, a tough one. They were really upset, but in the end, they said, "Oh, you know, we can understand if she doesn't want to be here. That's okay." So in the end, they sort of had peace with it. But um, yeah, oh, and when I described the house, they knew exactly where she went. So she did really, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a gift you have! What a gift. Oh. Mm. Um, oh, she... I added my dog's photo to my profile picture. If that helps, can you get Lily back? Oh, look, how oh, cute. how cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. I think she's just as spunky as you are, Lily. Yes. <laughs> What's the name, Lily? Yeah, Lily, give us her the name. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, looks like a little terrier, a Maltese terrier or something. Yeah, Maltese or a Shih Tzu or something, yeah. 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 She's laughing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. got her same energy. <laughs> Macy. 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 Oh, Macy. Hello, Macy. Yeah, Macy's her name. Yeah. Well, let's see. This will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> He's a Shih Tzu. I was right. Yeah. Wow. She's got a very bubbly personality. See, I see her very jumpy and energized. She's quite uh, bubbly and and out there, very outgoing. I, I hear the word extravagant, quite extravagant. Um, she loves things that are very much out of the ordinary and she can get bored very, very quickly. So if you don't do a variety of different things with her, like playing and walking in a different areas, she gets really bored very, very quickly. She's a very happy girl too. There is a bit of sadness around her though. I can feel like, like an emotional charge that is is pulling her down a little bit. Has something happened recently? that Because that, I, I also hear like a bit of a bang and that indicates that something may have happened that had an impact on her. Not necessarily like a physical impact, but an emotional impact. So, and and she's she's processing. It's nothing to be worried about. She says she goes, but I'm processing. So sometimes I may look sad. Sometimes I'm I'm having a down day. Don't worry about me too much. I'm just processing whatever comes through. She's also picking up a lot from you, Lily. So she's quite keen to making sure that you are in a healthy state of mind and in a healthy body. So whenever you have something going on for you, whether that's physical or mentally, she will take that on. So I would love for you to actually hold that energy to yourself and actually tell Macy not to do that because you are more than capable to dealing with these things yourself. But Lily is such a loving, high energy individual that she wants to take that on and actually process it for you so that you don't have to. Well, good stuff. She started having yeah. seizures in the last year, so she wanted to let you know that. Oh, Probably oh, your feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh that yeah. was great. That was a great reading. Oh, she's really cute. She's so beautiful. She is, she's she's beautiful. very excitable. <laughs> uh -huh. That's what I got. I got some excitement energy. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. For very sure. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm going to be tapping in too. Okay, let's do some reading. <laughs> I'll be tapping in reading dogs right now too. Um, yeah, so we're going to awesome. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, damn. Tammy put a picture of hers. You want to put Tammy? The picture of her dog. Tammy, what's his or her name? Shishon. I've never heard of a Shishon. A Shishon. Oh, my God, how cute is that? Oh, wow. Oh, gorgeous little one. Yeah. Yeah, Tammy, what's what's his or her name? Yeah. Just need what's a name. Mandy. Mandy. Another M. We've got Ooh, Mandy and Macy. <laughs> Mm. Mandy, Mandy. Is she grumpy? She feels like grumpy I'm... to me too. <laughs> <laughs> I really get like a grumpy, moody individual that if she, and especially if she doesn't get her way, she gets really upset. Because yeah. I can really see her like a toddler, like, and, and yeah. you know, having all these tantrums. Yeah, that's what I see too. <laughs> I got the same thing. I was like, oh, she's a grumpy girl. It's, I don't know. Yeah, like very opinionated. And, and it feels like she really wants things done in a certain way. Because if not, if she gets out of her routine, she's very off kilter. I can literally see her swaying off a road. As in, like, anything changes. Yeah. Most minor thing, like it, it's raining today and you can't go out for a walk. She's just, you know, don't even come close because I'm, you know, grumpy as anything. She can't cope with that. Everything has to be quite rigid. I see little boxes everywhere, like, and if things are <laughs> a bit OCD, if things are moved out of place, then you will know, because Mandy will let you know that that's the case. Oh, yeah. But I don't know if that's, yeah, no, that's definitely her. Is Doesn't it, feel yeah. external in energy, yeah. She says she's very lovable. Yeah. And is she older? Like, she loves. She, she loves her. She reminds me a little bit of cat energy. She loves her cuddles, but it has to be in her time. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she has anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. yeah no. And maybe mother. that's the snapping that does. I kept seeing. Yeah. Of course she does. Yeah, yeah. that brings yeah. her anxiety. Seven. So you may yeah. actually want to look into um, Tammy if you have any like natural elixirs. You know, like rescue remedy or something like that. Have a look mm -hmm. into those. Um, here in Australia, we've got Australian bushflower essences. You might want to have a review of their range. That may be beneficial for her because you can just put a few drops in her water or food that actually can calm her down a little bit with the anxiety. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's cute though. She's gorgeous. She's so gorgeous. We got 10 minutes. So anybody else want a card pull? We're going to do some card pulls. Yes, we're going to have some fun. We're going to we ask Bianca to pull some cards with us, even though animals are her thing. But we'll pull cards. For the first we'll give it a go. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go. go. Yes, you're welcome. If there's anything I've learned being on this journey with awakening and spirituality and using your skill sets, um, then, you know, always allow for flow. Always allow for more expansion. <laughs> yes, always. And learning, so it's always, always. good. We have the spirit wants to have fun with us too. They want us to, you know, enjoy ourselves and have fun and do things differently. So, and Tammy, one more thing. I just keep wanting to touch my paw, so I don't know if, if there's any issues with the paw or there's something, but I just mm. keep wanting to lick. Or if I have a joint issue in my leg, I don't know. I'm just getting drawn to the leg too, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay. Again, animals are not my niche. But I'm picking up some things, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yes. Yay. So, yes. so let's pull some cards, right? We're going to tag team it, all three of us. Let's do. Terry was the first one to raise her hand, and she didn't get one last time. So Terry Phillips, can I get a card reading? Yes, you can. Yes. Everybody can. get a card. Terry Phillips. Tracy, you want to go first? Of course. Terry, Terry, Terry. And I know Terry, so... Terry, I got a really beautiful card. I've never pulled this card before. So I'm going to show you first. It's got a beautiful owl. So I would definitely Google spiritual meaning of the owl um, when you get off this call too. Um, I don't know. I'm just being drawn to the owl a lot. So, and the card says, I do whatever it takes to get closer to consciousness. And I think, Tammy, for you, you're on a mission. And I know personally some history behind um, your mission and you're just keep working at it. Just keep getting closer. Just keep meditating. Keep walking. Keep doing the things that you're doing. You're getting closer and closer and closer every day. I know the outcome of it all, but you're almost there. Like just keep keep on going. Remember, 
things happen. I hate to say this because it's going to sound awful. Things happen for a reason. We just don't understand it at the time, right? But there is a big picture. And I want you to help find that purpose for that pain. And what's the big picture? What's going on? I just feel like you're being driven into the spiritual realm, the spiritual community, and just keep learning and keep, keep growing your knowledge. Just, I just keep on keeping on, girl. That's all I got to say for you. All right. Who's next? So the card I drew for you, Terry, is the, um, it's the Four of Cups. And um, this is just kind of a reminder that, um, you know, sometimes we can be looking at op certain opportunities that are coming in and we kind of forget to pay attention to the things that are already around us. So it, it's kind of, it's like that, that feeling of like, oh, the grass is always greener on the other side when really our grass was pretty green to begin with. Um, so I, I just kind of want you to kind of keep that in mind as you move forward and just kind of um, just really take stock of, of the things that, that are right there, of the positive things that are there in, in that are happening in your life. So. Cool. <laughs> we put her on the spot so we did put yeah. her on the spot that's beautiful oh wow gracious receptivity i can't see what it says yeah are you on oh. mute Sorry, oh. I was on mute. <laughs> Ooh, I'm mute like, <laughs> exactly. Like, oh. So this is gracious receptivity from a card deck called Beyond Lemuria. And this one is all about how are you receiving and then how are you communicating with yourself? I mean, the card is mostly blue, which is obviously around communication, but it also has elements of purple in there. And I'm, I'm getting a real strong sense that there is a big up level that you're going through a big transformation that you're working on right now mm -hmm. and allowing yourself to do that with love and grace for yourself and yourself i mean your core essence and to be receptive to your core essence messages that you're receiving right now and not blocking them out or not listening to them or ignoring them it's really allowing you to to truly dive into that space with you and that can be really scary because i can feel a little bit of fear around that unknown and that voice that you're not recognizing per se but to actually open up to that and to be very visible in that space with yourself because once you start doing that that transformation will happen so quickly and you'll come out at the other end much much better i can see really you know an expansive state of being for you as well with beautiful colors around you in your aura Oh, it's so beautiful. Amazing. I hope all that stuff resonates, Terry. All right, let's go to, is it J? J-A-I, am I saying that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. We're going to do a reading. I pulled the card and my card. I just love this deck. The universe has your back. So I stole it from Cassie. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> but it's such a good one. It's just practical, good advice, right? I never get to do, <laughs> I never get to use that deck anymore. I never get to use it ever again because, um, anyway. So, Jay, thank you, universe, for helping me see beyond the limits of my fear. Thank you for expanding my perceptions that I can see what is in the highest of in my highest good. So, this card is all about fear, and I always tell my clients fear is our number one block. Fear is the thing that will keep you from moving forward every single time. I need you to get comfortable being uncomfortable, I need you to get outside your comfort zones, I need you to take some risks and take those chances because tomorrow's never promised, right? And so I want you to just push the fear aside and whatever decisions that you're trying to make, are you making them because of fear? Are, are your choices because they're based around fear? And I really want you to sit and get clarity on that because I feel like some of your fears are holding you back from being the best possible version that you can possibly be. So it's time to do some self-reflection, some self-evaluating. You're meant to overcome for that which you are fearful of. That's kind of one of your purposes here. So push through it. And I'm going to tell you good luck. Yes. Who's next? 
So um, going with that same theme, um, I drew the an, another four card. Um, this is the four of, of coins and coins are usually based around like our material world. Um, and, but this is, this card is kind of known as like the miser card and it's something, and it's holding on to things so long that, it, that, that holding on no longer serves us. And so really it's the more fluid you can be, whether, whether it's ma with material items, with spiritual things, no matter what is going on, the more fluid you can learn to be the more you're actually going to see come in because us holding on means we've just stopped all energy coming or going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so by kind of releasing that hold a little bit, you're going to start seeing things, start, start seeing things move. And I think it's going to end up being positive. There you go. Amazing. So I've got the communication co-creation card, which is absolutely beautiful. And that's really allowing your, your energies to come through and also allowing yourself to, you know, this card also always indicates that we have more wisdom that we can tap into outside of ourselves. So what we do is we first go within to see what the wisdom is that we have for ourselves. But then we also have the outside elements that we can tap into in terms of the energies. And it really feels to me that that is an element that you are yet to tap into. So once you really hone in on, you know, releasing anything that may be a block for you, then you start to open yourself up even more. And it really holds that space in your heart to listen to your wisdom so you can create from there and co-creation from within. I always work with clients on our human self and our soul self. So we actually co-create together, whereas normally our human, as a human, we only work with our human, right? We forget about the fact that we are actually a spiritual being over here too and that we need to make sure that we are on the same path together. So it's, it's opening that channel and then also the channels to our guides who are always supporting us they are always with us so once we remove anything that may block that communication channel then you're really able to hone in on your own wisdom your soul's wisdom and those of your guides as well and that's where you really start to thrive once you have that oh, wonderful beautiful all right let's pull up diana she's next on the list and i got you guys on the list too everybody's on the list and we've got two minutes jeez as time goes by when we're having fun. So Diana Douglas, we're gonna pull a card for you. And I think it's funny, Diana, because Diana and I talked today earlier, but happiness is your birthright. And so, I mean, it's it's that simple. Choose happy every single day. You are on this mission of self-peace, alignment. Like you're so, and my friend Diana had a scammer reach out to her telling her she had negative energy attached to her. So we're all going to tell her great things that there is no negative energy and that people are scamming people out there. So I think it's great that I got the card that happiness is your first, right? And then you're on your, you're on your way and you're doing it. Okay. What you got, Cass? Uh, the card that I pulled is the uh, six of wands. And I like this card because if you see, it's actually it's actually a card of recognition um, and coming into that place of actually being recognized for your goals and for your achievements. Um, you know, the the liter the card literally depicts like someone writing in and everybody else just kind of being there to like watch them go by and ah so um and, and i feel like this is a very natural thing for you so it's something where you're you're if you haven't yet you're about to be acknowledged for a lot of those things that you have been doing in a positive positive in sense a positive way very positive, in a positive way <laughs> <laughs> All right. and i got vulnerability Aww. So there's a lot going on in that space and it's not necessarily vulnerability from a negative perspective. It's actually okay to be vulnerable. And sometimes we must be vulnerable for ourselves to understand what's really going on and what we can shift around that. But 
showing vulnerability to the world actually makes other people stronger and they are inspired by it. So you can use your vulnerability as a real good tool to get yourself more to the surface, but also to show other people that it is okay to share that part of you without having any of the fears or preconcepted ideas attached to that. So vulnerability is really important to, to allow others to, to really tap into their vulnerability, you know, and, and share that as a community together as well. So, yeah. Amazing. I think that's perfect for Diane. Perfect. Oh mm. my gosh, we're already out of time. It's so sad by the time the end comes, we have so many people. <sighs> Sorry, everybody, if we can't get to you, but just hear the messages and just know if it resonates with you, that those messages are just meant for you as well. Okay, so just listen to everybody else's. And if you are interested in animal communication, you want to learn, again, let's put up Bianca's website. You can find her there. It's a really easy to navigate website. You can go book your readings. You can go book. Um, you can get her books online, I believe. I saw I went yeah. searching before we got online. So everything's out there. And if you're interested in learning, I would get her book so that you can just start practicing your own intuition with your own animals, okay? If you want a reading, she'll do that for you too. Yes. Yeah, thank you for being on today. I think it's an amazing thing what you do. I'm glad the snake talked to you that night, that day, right? <laughs> Changed right. everything for you. Um, there's so many people are out there. They, I screenshot it, oh good. Um, so many people out there who love their pets, miss their pets when they're gone, wanna get to know mm -hmm. what's going on in their head. And so I think you're doing great work and the world needs more of you. So with that, mm -hmm. I will say thank you for being on. Cassie, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at Stargazers Unite, um, stargazersunite.com, stargazers.unite on any social media platform, um, creating brands, logos, and websites uh, that radiates your soul to the world. Yay. Tracy, how about you? You can find me. I am the Red Couch Medium, and I am the Red Couch Meeting everywhere. My website, Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. And with that... We will bid you all good night and we'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody.